Welcome to a new vlog. You might recognize the microscope behind me. It's the trinocular microscope I reviewed in vlog 282. And I must say it's a great tool to have on the workbench, especially if you uh, feel like your eyesight is getting weaker, but not necessarily only because of that. Uh, also, if you're working with small components like 0402, it's much easier to work with something like this, or if you're doing micro soldering uh, board repair on modern gadgets, you really need one of these microscopes. However, I have a problem with the uh, camera that's shipped with the microscope. The image that comes out of this uh, camera is uh, too black. I can't really see anything on a PCB with this camera. And I am in contact with Banggood, which supplied the microscope to fix the problem. They are in contact with their supplier and uh, are trying to solve this uh, problem. But due to the coronavirus infection in China, they said they're, they're getting the replies from the uh, supplier very slow. So hopefully they will be able to provide the solution for this problem. In my opinion, the solution is very simple. You just need to replace the camera. It's not a problem with the settings. It's a problem with the camera. So because of that, I've asked them to send uh, this camera for review. It's a Hayer branded uh, camera. It's capable of uh, up to 2K video resolution at 30 frames per second and 1080p at 60 frames per second. It's got HDMI output, USB output and SD card support. Uh, it can only do 1080p at 30 frames per second over the USB connection but that's okay because I will be using this over the HDMI connection and uh, I will be using it at 1080p 60 frames per second. The housing is all metal on this camera, it's probably aluminium and it's quite a different uh, form factor from the uh, uh, camera that I already had but I like the fact that the connectors are on the back side which allows for better wire management. Inside the box you get the 12 volt power adapter uh, which is needed for the camera. It doesn't have the proper EU plug. Uh, you get a remote control for the camera, a USB 2.0 cable, a lens adapter and a disc with software which I'm not sure I'm going to install unless I really need the drivers or something like that. Judging by the product pictures on Banggood this camera and lens combo is intended to be used standalone as a microscope and it's not really compatible with the camera port on my microscope. So instead I will be connecting this camera first through the passive adapter that came with the microscope and then later on I will be using another optical adapter which I purchased separately to observe the improvement in the field of view. So let's not waste any more time. I'm connecting this to the microscope and to my monitor. This monitor was reviewed in Vollog 268. It has a resolution of up to 2K, but I don't want the camera to be running in 2K because that will drop the frame rate. We'll see what we can do about that later. So first thing I noticed, the image is good, but not excellent. I was able to bring both the eyepieces and the camera into focus at the same time using the height adjustment on the camera adapter. The camera is running at 1080p 60 frames per second and I can check that on my monitor. Here is the settings menu of the monitor showing that. And we can see the field of view is about 23 millimeters. Now this is at the maximum working distance with the microscope head raised all the way up. At the same time through the eyepiece I can see the entire SODI module so I'm losing quite a lot through this passive adapter for the camera. Before I continue with the review let's switch to this one third adapter lens for the camera and check out the image. With the one third adapter I get the same field of view as through the eyepiece which is great I can see the entire SODI module but I can't get the image into a perfect focus and the corners start to go out of field of view going black. You can clearly see this issue in the image. This adapter has a very limited focus adjustment so in order to be in focus I have to physically raise the camera another 2 or 3 millimeters from the lens using the part which is only allowed for rotation adjustment not height adjustment. Since this is outside the adjustment limit it causes alignment issues which in turn cause certain areas of the image to be in focus while others not. 
I think the solution to this problem would be a better one-third adapter, so I'd really like to hear your feedback. Do you know of other adapters which have a better adjustment range for focus? Please let me know in the comments. So I will be switching back to the passive adapter for the rest of this re review to remove any problems it might cause. I don't want it to interfere with the review of the camera, it's not part of the camera package. Now let me show you the functionality of the remote. You can control the digital zoom, which might be useful on a small monitor like I have here, but I'm not a big fan of digital zoom. You can also control the exposure with left and right arrows. You can trigger image capture as well as video capture with the dedicated buttons, as long as you have an SD card inserted. You can navigate the menu system using the arrow keys and change settings. So you can pretty much control everything from the remote control, including power off. But here are some bugs I found in the firmware. First, if you turn the camera off from the remote, there is no possibility to turn it back on. So you have to reach for the camera and use the button on the camera for power on. I think that's either a bug or a design fail because if you can only use the remote for half the job, why bother? There is an issue with the camera resetting itself every time you insert or remove the SD card. And surely that must be a bug because why would you want your camera to behave like that? There is an issue with the camera powering off after you disconnect the USB connection from the computer. And what's up with that? It doesn't make any sense to power off the camera when you disconnect the USB. There is also the startup splash screen which you can't disable and it feels annoying especially because for a brief moment you see the camera feed and then you get the splash screen which stays there for a while. After connecting the camera via USB you lose the settings menu like it's gone, you can't trigger it from the remote or the buttons on the camera. Also, the camera shows this annoying message on screen when it's connected via USB and that blocks part of the image so it doesn't really allow you to use both the HDMI output and the USB at the same time with a full view. But it appears to be running the image in the background so I guess this could be fixed through a firmware update. So while I'm telling you my final thoughts on this camera, I'm gonna play some video I captured while using the higher supplied lens for this camera which turns this setup in a standalone mi microscope, you only need a stand for it. In order to show the best image quality, this camera needs to be paired with the proper lens and using the supply lens produces very nice images. High resolution, good contrast, so now I would really like to be able to get the same quality while installing this on my microscope. Hopefully, if I can find the right optical adapter, I will get the same quality while mounting this on my microscope. If you are thinking about getting this camera for your microscope and you do not have the proper optical adapter with enough adjustment, you are likely going to run into the same issue as I did. Now, if you don't need the microscope itself, then I would recommend checking out this product where you get the same Hayer camera but with a proper stand and you have yourself a high quality standalone microscope and all of this for less than it would cost to get the full microscope. I'm very happy with the image quality I get from this camera, I just need to find a better adapter to be able to use it with my microscope. There are some firmware bugs which I mentioned earlier, some I can live with, some I would like to see fixed and who knows, maybe they will release a firmware update after I send them a link to this video, we'll see how, how they respond. Banggood currently has this camera on special, it is available from both their EU warehouse and China warehouse, but it is cheaper if you can wait and get it from the Chinese warehouse. As always. Thank you for watching and let me know what you think in the comments below.